Stay seated. All right. Hey, Jim, good to see you back there. How you doing, man? Doing all right? Good to see you again. Uh, did, uh, did you guys, did my dad come see you yesterday? Did you knock on, did he, yeah, well, yes? Good, man, I'm glad you're here. Okay. He said, I said, Dad, you got to go see Jim. Uh, uh, it seems that uh, when he comes to church, you don't. So what's the deal with that? No, uh, he, my dad's not feeling well either, so... Um, He's always got my mom nagging him, so it's like. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Ma. Oh, she's not here either. Um, okay, what I want you to do is open up your Bibles to Joshua chapter number one. Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter one. Alex, that's in the Old Testament. I just. No. <laughs> Alex is like, wait, is he being serious? Uh, I'm Jones and you. What, Lincoln? No, not Josh chapter one, Joshua. I mean, I'm sure some guys called him Josh. Oh, yeah, if you have, do you have a Bible that has tabs in it? Like it's got like a little abbreviation on the side? No? Okay, yeah, no, no Josh. Yeah, good old King Dave. <laughs> Start abbreviating everybody's name in the Bible. <clears throat> um, yeah. What, Jesus can become JC. Uh, the Holy Spirit can become HS. Good old, the, 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 the ghost is in town. Um, no, I'm obviously, I'm kidding. I, would, I do not, I don't abbreviate Jesus' name. I don't write, I don't even put JC in my notes. I write out the name of Christ. It's To me, it's a, it's, it's a holy name. It's um, something very special and holy about it. I'm not, I don't, I don't even, my dad, uh, he'll abbreviate certain things and, and he'll even abbreviate things that I won't abbreviate. It just shows Christian growth on my end. Um, but, uh, uh, he, you know, he won't, he won't abbreviate Jesus's name or, uh, whole, and he might do the Holy Spirit or something, but I don't, if it's God, I write out God in a capital G. Um, I don't, uh, I, I write out Jesus's name. I write out, um, uh, a Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. I do not abbreviate. Um, I might put um, uh, King D or, um, uh, or I might put Josh, but I mean, but that's a good one. No, not Josh, but it's Joshua. Joshua chapter one, very famous verse here in verse number eight. Let's look together at Joshua chapter one, verse number eight. The Bible says, uh, Jesus is speaking to Joshua here after Joshua uh, uh, takes the reins after Moses has uh, gone to heaven. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for that promise that you gave to Joshua and how it... Uh, it applies to us today um, that uh, if we would observe to do all according that is written therein, that if we would meditate in the word of God, and I know that uh, uh, you didn't give that promise directly to me, you gave it to Joshua, but if I say, hey, man, that's a pretty good promise. I want to I wanna cling on to that. I want to attach myself to that. Uh, uh, Lord, I, I believe that you, your word teaches that you bless those that bless you, you honor them that honor you, you lift those that humble themselves and get under your the umbrella of your word uh, and get into you as refuge and trust you and your name and your word and you honor them uh, by fulfilling your promises and keeping to your word. Lord, I'd ask that you'd help us as a Christian people uh, to uh, live by the principles of this book that you've written for us and then reap the benefits thereof. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I was uh, texting my dad. We got back in town, and I said, hey, you know, how it's going? You guys feeling under the weather, blah, blah, blah. And we started talking. Um, uh, I said, man, I, I'm trying to get back into the rhythm, the swing of things. Um, uh, it just, um, you kind of, being in the truck, you lose a little bit of touch with, with uh, people. You're there by yourself, and you talk to yourself. And... Um, I used to get annoyed, and I used to just laugh at why truck drivers, they'll talk. If you get in a conversation with truck, they'll talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Well, I know why now. It's because they have nobody else to talk to. So when they get in a conversation with somebody, it's, 
they're hard to be quiet. So I'm doing my best not to become that guy. Um, so I'm glad the Lord has given me a platform to vent, <laughs> unload it all on Sunday. Um, no, but I, I got in the truck and I get back in the swing and I text my dad and we go, the topics varied. And he said, um, uh, most always when we follow the principles of the Bible, they work. Most always, not, not most always, it may be delayed, but the principles, principles of the Bible, they work. God wouldn't have written them and preserved them and given to us and have them copied down through man throughout all kinds of different languages for us if they didn't work. Now, principles, principles that we should live by. There are all kinds of them, tons of them. As a husband, as a wife, as a son, as a daughter, as a, uh, as, as a citizen, as a church member, as a pastor, as a teacher, as a, uh, uh, as a, uh, a parishioner to a church, as a uh, whatever the, the, the hat it is that you are wearing, whatever the responsibility, there are principles that go into it. Stewards, principles that go into it. Now, living a balanced life is, uh, as I said this morning, can be difficult. What we try to do is, is balance all the things in life. Uh, I, I might have, I may have said that in Sunday school, uh, but a balanced life means accomplishing all that God has for us to do and living life to the fullest. Now, I don't want to live an empty life. Uh, I don't want to live as King, uh, King um, uh, what's an abbreviation for Solomon? Uh, Solo? Solo. <gasps> King Solo for you Star Wars guys. Uh, King, King Solomon, I, for King Solomon, um, I, he, and he talked about... Uh, all the wisdom he gained and all the information he gathered. And he said, life is vain. Life is vain if you don't live it for God. The whole duty of man is to love God and to keep his commandments. And uh, uh, I want to live a full life. I want to live a full life. Some folks said that uh, uh, they might have died young, but they lived a full life. Or they died old, but they lived a full life. They died complete. They died happy knowing that they lived for others, that they enjoyed their time, that they valued the valuables. That means just they put a high price on the things that were valuable. Um, but what happens when we lose our balance? What happens when we, when we, um, uh, we, we neglect the book of the law? When we try to live life on our own balance, we try to live life by our own principles, our own rules, our rules by feeling. And by the way, you are not an originator of your own principles. You are either living by the world's principles or you're living by God's principles. There's, that's it. That, that, that's it. You may come from a, a uh, you, you may have the old family crest and the old family creed and the old family blood and the old family strongholds in your life. But the fact of the matter is you're either living by your own set of principles or God's principles, and you're not a maverick on the, on the, in the, in the trailblazing road of principles. You're living by flesh or you're living by the Spirit. And we get out of balance when we don't live by the book. We get out of balance when we don't live by the book. Um, uh, what happens when we lose our balance? We fall down, right? We fall down. Now, here's the great thing about being saved, is I can fall down but I don't have to stay down. I can get back up, right? The Bible says a just man falls seven times and rises up again. That's right. He rises again. So you don't have to stay down. Just because you lost your balance doesn't mean you can't regain it. Now, what happens when a Christian um, uh, uh, gets life uh, uh, out of order and out of, at an out of balance and doesn't take care of the major responsibilities uh, our, our life is a garden and we never weed it. We never um, uh, chase the varmints out, so to speak. And you don't care for it. You don't take care of it. You don't watch over it. It gets overgrown. It gets overgrown and life gets out of balance. You're going to fail. You're going to fail. The garden will fail. You lose your balance. If we do not weed the garden, you can have a whole lot of flowers or a whole lot of vegetables in there. But if you don't maintain it, it will become overgrown with an invasive species, and that's not what we want. Uh, just same thing with the balance aspect. If we don't maintain balance, we can lose our balance. So what we need to do is live by, to keep balance, we need to live life by principles, by principles. P what principles, though? The principles of the Word of God. The principles of the Word of God. Living by principle results in a life of achievement. I like achievement. I like being able to say, I got that done. 
pulling that tractor through uh, the mountains. That was an achievement for me. In my mind, it was like, okay, if I can get up near Dayton, I know I've made it. I know I've made it through the hills and the valleys, so to speak. Uh, I, I know that I've made it to Canaan land, amen? I've gotten out of the wilderness. It's an achievement for me to get down this mountain not having lost control. It's an achievement for me to climb this mountain without um, uh, going so slow I, I, I stop and stall out. It's an achievement. It's an achievement. I like achievement. I like being able to say I, I passed the test. I like being able to say I, uh, I, I got the job done. And everybody does. Now, I want to live life and, 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 and have achievements in my life, and I want it to be filled Fulfillment is what I want. Everybody's looking for that in one way or another is fulfillment. Um, now, living, get this, uh, all this is introduction, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, going to pile on some principles to live by in different aspects of life. I don't think I'll get too preachy tonight. Uh, this is introduction, and I'm going to give you some key principles that I hope that maybe one will stick out to you and you'll latch on to it, and you'll begin to develop biblical principles in your life as God told you to Joshua don't let this book of the law depart out of thy mouth. Meditate in it day and night. Live by these things. That way it becomes a, a, a reaction. When you begin to live by these things, it's an immediate reaction. So living in reaction to worldly pleasures, though, um, and social norms, and um, uh, um, what they end up doing is they result in a life of anxiety and they result in a life of stress, trying to keep up, trying to... Um, uh, uh, always be PC and always be, and I'm not saying you're being, I'm not saying you go around not being considerate of people's feelings. Of course you are. But if you're always like, oh, is that the right thing? And, then, uh, uh, and trying to keep up with the world's pace, you will drive yourself crazy. And what we, what, um, I, I hate to quote this because I don't know, I don't, he's, he's definitely not of the same cloth but um, it was, you know, anybody know who Kanye West is? Kanye West? He was in an interview with somebody. He was talking about the, the BLM scam. And he said, um, and he talked about his heritage and his people. He's a black man. He ought to be, and he's speaking for a disenfranchised people in a, in a, in a, um, a minority group of people. And he says, our people, they have the shadow over their eyes. They've been blinded. He said, but I, and the man said, you know, how do you, how do you feel about how your culture feel about your people feel about you? And he basically said, I don't perform for them. He said, I have an audience of one, and that's God. I perform for God. Okay, listen, I'm not, uh, that's not some, some crazy profound, but it doesn't mean it's any less true. Folks, you don't perform for your friends or your family. You don't perform for your coworkers. You perform for God. And it's not just an act. It's not just a show. You are who you are. And I mean you try to live by biblical principle and biblical law for God because God sees it. Not that your husband sees it. Not that your wife sees it. Not that your children sees it. Not that your employees or your employer or your friends or whoever, whatever, your, your, your teammates or your coach or whoever sees what you're doing and want, they want to gawk on you or, or, or um, uh, uh, laud you or put you on a pedestal. But it's that God sees it because right is right no matter the circumstance because we want to do what's right in the sight of God. And instead of uh, 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 giving in to these pressures and the social norms that will result in undue necessary um, or undue anxiety and undue stress, we can be at peace in our hearts saying, I did what I know God wanted me to do. I did what I knew God wanted me to do. And it was a great thing, um, it, it, very, very uh, similar to when we were kids. And the whole house would be busy about doing something, but um, uh, and the whole family would be working toward a goal. But Dad said, "Listen, hey, I want you to, I want you to come out of there, and I want you to go and do this specific job, this specific thing. I want you to do." And when you kind of, it felt empowering. It felt, hey, wow, I get to leave what the whole normal situation is, and I get to go on a special mission. I get to go do something special, and that's what it is. As a child of God, the whole world is doing their thing. The whole world is putting on a show for everyone else. The whole world is trying to get rich and die trying. The whole world is trying to, to please themselves and please others and, and be popular. 
But the Christian has been called out on a special mission to do a special job for one, and that is our Heavenly Father. Now, there are a whole lot of Christians, a whole lot of Americans living in stress and anxiety, and I'm not saying all stress and all anxiety is from the world. There is the stress of just being a mom, a stress of just being a dad, a stress of being a grandparent, a stress of um, uh, uh, just the stresses of life. I, I, don't th- I don't know if there's anybody in here who's just trying to keep up with you know, what Hollywood's doing. This is middle America, blue collar people, blue collar jobs, blue collar way of thinking. And um, uh, uh, I don't think we're trying to keep up with Kim Kardashian and um, whoever the Hollywood stars are or the politicians or, or whatever the case is. Uh, we all have our own worries and anxieties and stresses, but you have to sit down and evaluate that and say, are these, are these uh, uh, just stresses that I can handle on my own or are these un, are these um, um, un, un, um Un, undesirable, un, well, all stress is undesirable, but um, unnecessary anxieties and unnecessary stresses. Am I picking a fight that I don't need to fight? Am I out here putting uh, uh, extra stress on myself that I don't need? Many of us have sat down and uh, uh, take, taken tests before. And we, what we've done, we've put so much stress on ourselves. And what you did is you practiced, if you practiced and you studied and you rehearsed and you went over, you shouldn't have to stress. You just have to sit down, take it easy, take a chill pill, so to speak, and recall to memory the things that you read and learned and rehearsed. But what happens is this testing time comes along and we sit down and we go, oh, and we grip that pen a little tighter. Why? Because there's so much pressure on the end result. Well, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. What we need to understand that God's laws are in control. I want you to get this. Everybody say that back to me. Say, God's laws are in control. God's laws are in control. Good. Say, you cannot break God's laws. You cannot break God's laws. But you only break yourself. Say that. But you only break yourself. Against God's laws. Against God's laws. say, you broke the law. No, you didn't. The law will break you. You can't break God's laws. You can, you can cross the line. You can violate the rule, but you cannot break the law. Understand that. The law is established. It is unbreakable. But what we do is, is when we, we live outside of Joshua 1.8, we're not harming the kingdom of heaven. We're not harming God. We're not harming Jesus. We're not harming anyone but ourselves. And when we harm ourselves, we harm our testimony, and we harm our relationships, and we harm the opportunity for, the lost, for lost people to get saved. That's why God doesn't want it. God loves us, and care. I can't stub God's toe, but I can stub my toe on God's law. I can't shatter his teeth, so the, the teeth of the law, but I can shatter my teeth on the law. And God says, you don't have to stub your toe, and you don't have to shatter your teeth. David Johnson, some years ago, we were in high school, and he came to school in a cast. And I said, David, what did you do? He said, I punched a wall. I said, David, walls are 100 for 100 out of people who punch them. You don't, not only, not only does the wall not feel it, but you feel it. And not only does the wall not have to go out and, and get a Band-Aid or, or does the wall get bruised? And I know it depends on what you punch, but he punched a concrete wall. Uh, he broke his wrist. What happened? It cost him. The wall didn't break. The wall didn't break. It broke him. And that's what happens to us. We go and punch the law and the law says, nope, I fought the law in the law. <laughs> The laws win. The law wins. The law always wins. So we need to, we need to uh, uh, put a high value on the things that God puts a high value on. What does he put a high value on? The Bible says, for what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mark, uh, Mark chapter 8. God places, uh, places a high value or a high price on the home, on, on work, um, on um, uh, uh, the temple, the spirit, which is our body, or the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is our bodies. And um, uh, what we have to do is, is find out, okay, what's, what's important? What, what does God think is important? 
and then take what God thinks is important and then prioritize it. Make it priority. Um, uh, put them in order the way that they ought to go. This makes a principle, which is the word of God, the center of our life, the center of our life. Now, I'm gonna skip the rest of my introduction and go into a couple of principles. Very, some of these are will ring a bell. Some of these you already have down pat, but let's just do it anyway. Um, uh, let's first understand that um, uh, we need to nail down, and I guess I didn't put it really in principle form, but God's laws never conflict, conflict with each other. Understand that God's laws never conflict with each other. They don't butt heads. They build each other up. The Word of God is an incredible book with all of its pages, with all of its books, with all of its writings, with all of its instructions, um, uh, uh, there are not two instructions that are in that book that conflict with each other. That conflict with each other. Um, uh, uh, they don't conflict with each other. So don't ever think that they do. Number two, all of God's commands are possible to obey. God wouldn't have told us to do something that we could not do. Now I'm not talking about um, uh, uh, New Testament Christians. I'm not talking about. The, the sacrifices and the incense offerings and the dividing of the meats and the, that that's done. Uh, that's uh, that's that's Jewish law. That was uh, we're no longer under the law, but under grace. Thank God we are under grace. It's a good thing to be under grace, isn't it? If you anybody know what grace is, God's grace, isn't it a good thing to be under God's grace? Where there's not a whole bunch of you got to do this and you got to go do that and you got to man, it's a good thing to be a Gentile under grace. It, tr it really is. Now, I know the Jews got a great blessing. They're God's chosen people. But man, to be under God's grace and, and I don't have to do a bunch of works to get to heaven and, and hope I did enough good works to be able to get there, it's all of God's grace. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. It's a great thing to be saved by grace. Um, uh, but God didn't give us anything in his book that we couldn't do. If God said go, we can go. Amen. If God said, what did, what, did the, what did Scripture say? It says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Folks, you don't have to choose between obeying the commands of God for your family or for work. You can do both. I believe uh, 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 straight up, according to the Bible, that a man can be uh, the right kind of father. He can be the right kind of husband. He can be the right servant of God. He can be the right Christian. He can be the right employee. He can be the right friend. He can be the right everything he needs to be. Uh, uh, I believe that we can have a, Christ, uh, a balanced life, a balanced Christian life. I believe we can um, be obedient and successful in all the areas that we find ourselves, that all the different um, uh, relationships of life that we have. We don't have to choose which we want to obey. We don't have to choose which we think is the, um, uh, the greater good. We, we can choose and we can, have our, we can have our cake and eat it too with God's word because all of God's commands are possible for us to obey. He wouldn't have given us things that we couldn't obey. I don't tell you guys to go do things that you can't do unless I'm testing you, unless I'm putting you through something and I wanna see how strong you are or how patient you are or how smart how smart you might be. Uh, uh, and I, don't, I put you guys through things, but what do I tell you to do? I give you jobs that you can do. All the things that I tell you to do, all the things that your mother tells you to do, all the things that your teacher tells you to do, you can do. You can do. We just read it this morning, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ. Amen. Let's push pause. Through Christ. Well, who is Christ? Well, he's the son of God. Where is Christ? He's on the right hand of God. But where also is Christ? John chapter one, verse number one, that says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was, God, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And then you, and you go through the chapter, it talks about light and darkness, and it talks about how the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The word, the word that we have, we have Jesus in the English language, amen. We have Jesus, the holy, inspired, preserved word of God for us today. I can do all things. Now let's rearrange this. This isn't the Jake version. It is a biblical version, but I'm gonna, it'll help your thinking. I can do all things through Christ, okay? Well, where is Christ also? He is also in my heart. The Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit, the other comforter that he gave me is in my heart. But where also? If it is the Bible, if Jesus is also the Bible, then I can do all things through the instruction of the Bible because it strengthens me. 
Thy word have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against God. If I take God's word and I put it in my heart, I can do all things. I can know all, and that doesn't mean I know all things about physics and I know all things about geometry and trigonometry and all things about um, uh, uh, space and time. And It doesn't mean I just become some, but the Bible gives us wisdom. When Solomon became king and, and God said, Solomon, ask what you will and I'll give it to you. And Solomon said, Lord, help me to know how to rule your people. Help me get, Lord God, give me wisdom so I know how to rule your people right and to do what's right. And God said, not only will I give you that, but I'll give you riches and honor and glory and majesty, and I'll make no, there'll be no king that will ever be, amount to you. Why? Because it pleased God what he asked for. He asked for wisdom. God, godly, heavenly wisdom. Well, the Bible says that the, that the wisdom of earth, the wisdom of men, that the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. And the weakness of God is stronger than all the strength of men. And God says, I'll give you a portion of that. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro about the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him. God is looking for a man. God is looking for a young man. God is looking for a young lady. God is looking for somebody to give his spirit to so they can teach, so they can prophesy, so they can witness, so they can expound on the Bible and teach others also that the, that the, um, the foolishness of preaching, many might be turned to righteousness. We don't have to choose we don't have to choose in the Bible. All of the, all of the commands of God are, are obeyable. We can obey all of them. Number one, God's laws don't conflict with each other. Number two, all of God's commands are possible to obey. Number three, God's laws are not agreements. God's laws are not agreements. They are commandments from God to obey. Get that. I want you to understand. understand I want you, you boys to understand. Um, specifically, uh, when I tell you, hey, um, clean your room and we can you know, chill out and watch the game, that's not an agreement. You're going to clean your room whether there's a game to watch or not. You're going to do what you're told to do. You're going to obey and you're going to do it right and you're going to do it the first time whether you like it or not. Why? Because dad or mom or the teacher or whoever may be in charge, the authority gave you a command to obey. It's not an agreement. There's no agreement there. Uh, people of the earth who I call my children, if you'll do what's right, I'll, 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 I'll do this for you. God's not bartering with us. He's the sovereign, almighty, all-knowing, all-being, uh, uh, all-powerful God. And he says, this is my word and this is what you should do. And when he looks down on the earth and he sees the few, he sees the, 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 the groups, the churches, the people, the homes, the individuals uh, 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 obeying. God lends his power and his wisdom and his, um, his blessing to those people. God says, I will equip those who obey the call. God has had a draft. You're either a draft dodger and you're burning your draft card or you've obeyed that draft and you've, in got, and you've got in line and you've got your papers and you've got your orders and you're in the military and you're out marching doing what you're supposed to do. We're either running from the call or we've listened to the call. But God's laws are not agreements for us to accept or not. And far too many Christians are trying to cut deals with God. Far too many Christians are trying to use excuses and, and, and get out of doing it. Well, well, so-and-so doesn't do it, and the church down the street doesn't do it, and, and, and my dad doesn't do it anymore, and my brother doesn't do it, and, and uh, 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 Jack Howes isn't around to lead the group anymore, and Bob Gray is getting older, and he doesn't do it as much, and, and Alan Domley, he's not doing it, and all these guys on the wall here, they're dead, you know? So who's really watching? Who's paying attention? I don't really have a form to follow anymore, and you know, I the, they're not here for the culture and they don't know the waters that I have to navigate so they don't know how hard it is trying to reach this generation I as a young preacher have to do what is necessary whether it's incorporating the, the worldliness into our church to reach the world fully on that that's so, that's so foolish that's foolish no, no, so-and-so doesn't do it. They don't go soul winning. They don't read from the King James Bible anymore. They don't have altar calls anymore. They don't believe in separation anymore. They don't believe in standards anymore. Folks, it doesn't matter. If it's a command of God, we've got to obey it, 
whether we like it or not, because it is the command of God. There is a hierarchy to this thing of Christianity and God's in charge and right there are the guidelines. God's in charge. People often think that if someone else is not fulfilling their obligations and their responsibilities and their duties, that they also have a right not to fulfill theirs. You know, the, uh, the boys do that all the time. And I don't mean to pick on you boys, but um, uh, uh, it, it's a childlike thing. It's an immature thing, and, and you'll learn. But uh, many times, one of the boys may not be doing what they were told to do. And I'll come along and catch one of them and say, why aren't you doing this? And they said, well, so-and-so isn't doing it, so I didn't want to do it. It doesn't matter if you don't want to do it. Do what you've been commanded to do, whether everybody is doing it or not. I don't, I don't want to put you, but they said wrong is still wrong, whether everyone is doing it or not. And right is still right, whether everyone is doing it or not. Do what's right. Obey the commands of God. We're not just going to switch over to contemporary music because everyone else is doing it. We're not just going to switch over to the new uh, emerging church type of uh, um, uh, philosophy and, and um, uh, 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 way of service that they do things just because everybody else is doing it. And I'm also not just going to try to have a Jack Hiles type of church because Jack Hiles did it. I want to find out what is the biblical method and biblical picture of a church. And the biblical uh, 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 picture of a church, is you can find it written all over the book of Acts. And then all Paul's letters written to, uh, uh, to, to the churches uh, uh, to be a right kind of church. Now, I don't think that the churches in uh, the, New the early church in the New Testament, I don't think they had ushers in burgundy jackets come forward and pass plates. I don't think it operated that way. I don't think they had announcement time. I don't think that they had a special. This just, folks, that's just an order of service. That's all that is. And you can take all of that. We can meet under a tree somewhere, still open up the Bible, still sing some songs and uh, uh, spiritual songs and hymns. And, and, and somebody can testify and talk about how God has been good. And somebody can raise their hand and say, please pray for me. We can walk over and put our hands on a brother or on a family or on a young man who's, 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 fighting with the call of God on his life and, and, and a family who's going through it or a, a family who's been called to go to the mission field and we're supposed to anoint each other and encourage each other and edify each other and convict each other with the word of God. So we have the service and I'm not saying we're gonna do away with it, but we're not just gonna do things because the world's doing it. We're not just gonna do things because others are doing it. Take that stress, take that pressure, take that anxiety and get rid of it. I gotta tell you, as a, as a independent, fundamental Baptist pastor, as myself, I, I sometimes feel pressure from what other independent, fundamental Baptist churches are doing. I look and go, well, what are, what are they doing? I, well, am I supposed to do this? What will the other brethren think? Who cares? Who cares? Independent. They don't get a say. Now, they can have a say, right? We've all heard of brothers criticizing brothers and churches criticizing churches. We've all heard of that, but I don't care. Don't care. We, are, we want to do what's pleasing in his sight. Um, uh, 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 so we can't run away from God's commands. We can't run away from what the Bible has said. This is what I say. This is what I require. God's laws are not agreements. They are commands. Say that with me. Say, God's laws are not agreements. They are, they are commands of which we are to obey. Are Marriage is not an agreement, it is a commitment. Is agreement, is a commitment. I did not need you to repeat that, but thank you for being intent and listening. Marriage is not an agreement, it is a commitment. You didn't get up here, listen, hang that prenuptial stuff, hang that, um, what do they call that? Um, not prenuptial, um, oh, it's an agreement. Marriage agreement, if you got a bunch of money and you're like, well, if we get divorced down the road, I get half this money? Oh, a pre okay, yeah, a prenup. Uh, a, a, a prenup. Uh, uh, these agreements about marriage. No, it's a promise before God. It's a promise before God. It's a sacred matri uh, uh, matrimony before God. You didn't make an agreement. You made a commitment. Till death do us part. Sickness is in health, poverty and wealth, forsaking all others. That's what we said when we got married and we didn't make an agreement, we made a commitment. I don't wanna do weddings where people say, well, we, read our, we, we wanna do our own vows. If your own vows don't have promises like that which is already written, then I don't wanna hear them because your promises usually don't hold up till death do us part. Till death do us part. As Miss Sarah loads the gun. Uh, as Miss, as as death, till death do us, does us part. 
Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not, um, it's not, um, it's not just to be a good husband. I'm not, I don't want to only just be a good husband if my wife is good. I want to be a good husband because that's what God wants of me. That's what God wants of me. Uh, I'm, so I'm supposed to be a good husband according to the Bible by command, by command. Number four, number four, and uh, I'm going to let you out of here. All of God's principles go hand in hand. All of God's principles go hand in hand, supporting and strengthening another. All of God's principles go hand in hand, supporting and strengthening the other. Here's an example. If we follow the laws of God in regards to our work, our work, now God puts a price a value on work. If we will support God's laws in regards to our home and our marriage, hmm, work, work is at home and work is in our marriage. It's not just at the nine to five, so to speak. It's at home, it's in our marriage. Now, if we do that, that will support the laws of God in our relationship, excuse me, with him. If we're working on our relationships then that actually, the principle of it, works on our relationship with him. Now, the word of God will never, ever make you choose between work and family. The word of God will never make you choose. Now, you should, the word of God won't. Please understand that now. The word of, now, the world will. The world will tell you work or family. The world will tell you, give up your holidays, give up your Christmas, give up your overtime. You don't need to go to that barbecue. You don't need to go to that birthday. You don't need to go to that game. You don't need to go support your family. You don't need to go do those things. You need to be at work because we pay you. Well, guess what? I'll go find another job. You're like, but yeah, but that'll look bad on my resume, job hopping and stuff. Yeah, not anymore. They'll take who they can get for as long as they can get them. But the word of God will never make you choose between work or family. The word of God will never do that. The word of God will tell you to do both as best that you can until, you have a, until you're at a crossroads and then you ask God for guidance and wisdom and say, dear God, what do I do? Dear God, what do I do? I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm already, already tired of, I don't, I don't wanna go anywhere. And I don't mean I wanna stay home and, and eat Cheerios and do nothing on the couch. I mean, I... I gotta provide for my family, but man, I, I hate leaving. I hate it. I don't wanna go. Do you get to see the beautiful countryside? I don't care. I wanna see my beautiful wife. I wanna see my baby boy. I wanna, the other ones I don't really care about. Uh, but I, I, <laughs> I, I aw. Hmm. Do you know what this is right here? It's the world's smallest violin. It's playing a sad, sad song just for you. <laughs> Did you just say you'll break my microphone? It's not mine, it's God's. Psst, burn, burn that boy. Uh, and I won't have to get you. Alex will come slap you. <laughs> you did what to that microphone? Uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, we can do both. Work hard, love your family, do what's right. The Bible tells us how to do all of this how to manage all these responsibilities we have in life, and when it's time to make a sacrifice. When it's time to make a sacrifice. Our biggest problem in life is that we waste too much time. If you see um, in your bulletin, the, the featured sermon of the month is don't waste the wasted years. Don't waste, and I know the premise behind that uh, and the message behind that is like you had these wasted years of your life don't make them be for nothing. Use your testimony. Use your experiences. Use what you've been through for good now. Well, don't waste your time. Don't waste time. Don't waste our time. It's been said before. It doesn't take a lot of time to be a good Christian. It takes your whole life. It doesn't take a whole lot. It doesn't take a whole uh, a lot of time to be a good Christian. It takes your whole life. A Christian is not a, I have arrived. At salvation, yes, I became a Christian. But then a growing Christian is a lifetime. It's not a, I have arrived. It's a continual, I am arri I'm arriving. I'm arriving. It's much like the journey, dr journey driving a semi-truck. Destination one, destination two, destination three. And what do I do? Check it off the list. Check it off the list. Check it off the list. Until what? Until I arrive home. 
until I arrive home. And we've got all these destina- destination good husband. Eh, can't quite check that yet. Destination good father. Mm, I'm still trying. Um, these are still places that I'm, 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 I'm journeying to. I'm still trying. I'm, I'm trying to do these things and go these places. But I, I want to do it as a good Christian. I don't want to just, well, I got married and I'm a husband so I can let myself go and do what I want and kind of disrespect her and, and um, uh, make her um, uh, a second-class citizen and me for and this whole Neanderthal me mentality of foolishness. Um, no, no. Uh, I am supposed to honor her and, and love her as Christ loves the church. But, and and I, that's a Christian outlook. That's a Christian principle. It's Christian to do that. Too many, too many people are trying to hurry up and have their devotions. Too many people are just trying to hurry up, have your devotions so they can get their walk with God in and get it, get it in and get it out of the way. Get it in and get it out of the way. Folks, it... it it, didn't, it doesn't say it's a visit with God. It doesn't say it's a quick check-in with God. It's a walk with God. I mean, it's a walk. It's a walk. And when we do the walk, it equips us for the run, the race that is set before us. Folks, why don't you just walk with him all day? I said it this morning. You don't just pray one time. You can pray throughout the day. You shouldn't go any place that God isn't with you. Moses said, Lord, if you don't go with me, I don't want to go. Lord, if your presence go not with me, I don't want to go. I prayed before I went into those mountains. I said, Lord, be in those mountains. Be in those mountains. And I don't mean be there to take me home. I mean be there to get me through them. I said, Lord, be in those mountains as I go up and I go down. Lord, I want to go home to my family, the family that you gave me, the family that you blessed me with, the family that I'm supposed to love and raise, the church that I pastor. I said, Lord, take me home to it. Take me home to it. Lord, deliver me home. God, get me home. You shouldn't go any place that God won't go with you. You shouldn't say, well, uh, uh, well, God, I, 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 um, I, I want to hurry up and get my Bible reading in and, and get my praying done so, so I can get on with what I have to do during the day and kind of just get this out of the way. Uh, folks, no, take Jesus with you to work. Take him with you. Put him right here in your heart and take him with you. Uh, next week, I'll, I'll pick up on um, uh, some principles with the walk of God. But I wanted to give you some principles about the word of God tonight and about God's word and about um, uh, if we won't let it depart out of our mouth, if we'll meditate on it, and if we'll dwell in it, if we'll stay in it, God will make our way prosperous and we'll have good success. You can take Joshua 1.8 and tie it directly into Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. Um, uh, Get that, get that. It doesn't take a lot of time to be a good Christian. It takes a lifetime. It takes a lifetime. Uh, So don't uh, don't get so down on yourself. Don't get discouraged with yourself. If you're a young Christian, don't say, man, what am I ever going to? You will. Just stay by the stuff. Stay continual. Open that Bible every day. If you fall, get back up. It's just very, very, um, uh, I say it's very simple in its basis. And that is, just a continual faith toward God. That continual getting up, that continual talking, that continual walking. Get that. Not a visit. It's not a check-in. It's a walk. A walk with God. Do you walk with him? Um, uh, What I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for all of us. We're going to have an altar call right where you are. Let's go to the altar tonight. Ask God to help us, forgive us, and, and help us. Heavenly Father, uh, Each of our families, we want good success. We want prosperity. We want peace. We want victory. We want to slay the giants. We want to, um, as Caleb said, claim that mountain. It belongs to me. Uh, Heavenly Father, we, we want these things, but help us to understand very plainly that we cannot have the promises of the Bible if we will not obey the Bible. And how can we obey a book we know such little about? Heavenly Father, help us to learn this book inside and outside, uh, from the front to the back. And I'm not saying it's something that we have to memorize, but it's principles, it's parables, it's stories, it's messages that that are in there for us. And Lord, they are boundless, they are endless, they are limitless. But Lord, there is not 
there's not a, a, a principle in there, there's not a command in there that is directed toward us that we can't obey. You wouldn't have told us to forgive if we couldn't. You wouldn't have told us to love our enemies if we couldn't. You wouldn't have told us to give if we couldn't. Go if we couldn't. Lord, we can. Where there's a will, there's a way. Where there's prior, we prioritize the things that are important to us. Help us to prioritize your word in our hearts. Set it before our minds. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we thank you for your patience and your long-suffering and your love toward us. Help us, Heavenly Father, as we not hurry up and become a Christian, but we patiently become more like Jesus. Oh, Lord, we look forward to seeing Jesus. We look forward to seeing you face to face one day. But uh, as we still live and breathe here on this earth, help us to be stewards of what we've been given, to cultivate the life and the, 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 the people that have been put in our lives and in our way, and to be witnesses for the gospel's sake. Uh, Lord, thank you again for loving us. We ask you that you'd be with us this week as we come and go. And uh, Lord, help us to be ready to ask forgiveness of our sins and ready to praise you when something good happens and ready to share the gospel when an opportunity presents itself. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, be with us this week. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hit it. <laughs>